Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel, or whatever. Um, today we're talking about cheap flights and how to get a cheap flight. Um, obviously when you're traveling, one of the biggest expenses is flights. Just getting to and from places, like going over to like, Thailand can, or Australia will be like a thousand dollars, super expensive. Um, and even Europe used to be super expensive, though now it's kind of getting less expensive. Um, and any websites that I'm talking about, um, they'll be linked down below if you want to check them out. Though, one of the biggest things is that you use incognito mode when, um, when you're looking at flights. Because otherwise, like, the cookies will, like, track you and they'll see if you're looking at a flight again and again. They'll start bumping up the price of it. So always do incognito mode. Uh, a bunch of people say, like, certain days of the week if you book them, it'll be better. I personally haven't found this. I do find that the prices change day to day, but I have not seen a particular day or days where the prices are better. Maybe I will in the future, but uh, as up to now I have not noticed that. Um, I have noticed, however, if you fly out on days, like on the weekend, weekend tends to be a little more expensive, whereas like weekdays, like middle of the week especially, is a lot cheaper. Even Thursday can be sometimes expensive. Um, just because so many people are flying. So the general rule is if a lot of people are flying at that time, then the prices are going to be higher because there's more demand for it. Um, so like during March break or like spring break, prices tend to be higher, like right before or after holidays, they tend to be really expensive. On like the actual holidays, like on Christmas or on Thanksgiving, it's not as expensive just because no one's actually flying because they're all with their families usually. So. Um, so the first website I want to talk about is Skyscanner. I absolutely love Skyscanner. It is probably my favorite website. It's the first one I always go to. Um, you can download it on your phone as an app or you can go on the website. Um, just make sure you go to incognito mode and then you can just type in skyscanner.com and you can up in like the top right corner, I believe it is, you can change the currencies that it's whatever your home currency is because I live in Canada so it'll always come up as like US dollars and I that just doesn't compute to me so I will always change it to Canadian so that I actually know what the price really is. So on Skyscanner you can put like where you're leaving from yeah then you just click explore everywhere so if you're on the phone it'll just look like this if it'll focus on it and literally explore everywhere and you click that and then it'll show all the cheapest flights. You can just browse through them. Otherwise, um, on the website you just type in everywhere or when you start typing it'll be like one of the first options that like shows up anyways. So then you'll just click that and then you can click like a specific set of dates if you want or you can click an entire month like oh I want to go in this month. Or if you really want to be flexible and want to get the best deal you can put cheapest month. So you click on the months and it'll have those options at the, near the top. It'll say cheapest month. Click that and it'll show you whatever like the cheapest flight of the entire year is pretty much. Or even into the next year depending on where you are in the year. So that's super useful. Um, that's where I go to before I look at any flights anywhere else because it really does have that explore feature. And if you have the luxury of being flexible with your dates, you really can find some good flights that way. Um, one more thing with Skyscanner that I should mention is that the reason that they kind of have the best prices is because they, they actually advertise a lot of the budget airlines. So a lot of the other, like Kayak, they don't have the actual, the budget airlines on there, um, whereas Skyscanner does. So you can find like the super cheap, but like like the seat will be small, you can't have big carry-on suitcases, you can't have like carry-on suitcases, like you won't get a meal, etc, etc but it makes flying actually a lot cheaper. So for people who, you know, really want that comfort, just keep that in mind and, you know, check on the airline. Um, for people who really don't care and just wanna travel, like that's really what I would recommend and it's super, super easy. Um, the next one that I have actually used to book most of my flights is Student Universe. Um, so if you are a student, then you can actually sign up and get more discounts. But if you're not, you can still like sign up to the website. The one thing about Student Universe is that you do need specific dates. 
So I'm someone who likes to like be flexible and just kind of find what the cheapest flight is and then just fly out on that day because it's not, you know, I don't have like a super rigid schedule. Um, so what I'll often do is I'll go to Skyscanner first. I'll find what the cheapest days are to fly out to somewhere. Say I want to go to Puerto Rico. I will put it in, see, okay, wow, this date's really good. So then I'll go into Student Universe and I'll put those dates in. If it's return flight or just date, if it's one way. And then it'll often show you the, like, you can choose the option to make it flexible, so it's plus or minus three days on either end. And then you can kind of browse and see. And I found that sometimes the prices are way worse than Skyscanner, but sometimes they're actually a little bit better. And also Student Universe has these coupons, like if it's your first time flying with them, or they'll have specific coupons for different regions. So always check into that because you can get it a little bit cheaper. Even if it's, you know, $20 less than a flight on Skyscanner, like right there, that'll, you know, pay for a hostel in some countries or a nice meal. So, yeah. Another one that I like to use is Google Flights. I don't really book anything on Google Flights using Google Flights, but it's good to kind of look and see kind of what the prices are likely to be with different regions. This one as well, you can do like an everywhere feature and actually look on a map and just like browse through the entire map and like look at what's what prices are and where how expensive things are to fly to certain places. So that's pretty good. Um, so those are my three main ones. I know some people like to use Momondo. I've used Momondo off and on. Mm, doesn't really stand out too much to me. Um, if you go directly to the airline, you can also do that. Sometimes they'll be really crappy prices, sometimes they'll be really great prices. Just kind of depends. Um, another thing is credit card points. So if you sign up for a credit card, you can get like a specific like travel credit card that'll give you like points for a specific airline or for an airline service or something like in Canada we have air miles. Um, if you do that and if you, you'll get a huge bonus usually when you sign up. So I did that with mine and I actually got to pay for my flight back home from Europe for free just using all the points. So that was pretty awesome. Another thing is to save money is carry on luggage. Only travel with carry on luggage because checking bags is so expensive. Some flights, or like if you're going to a resort or if you're going all the way across the world, some flights will include a checked bag for free with it, but a lot of them don't, especially in Europe. In Europe, often they only let you have a small little backpack and not even like a carry on suitcase. You have to pay extra for the carry on suitcase. And sometimes the airlines will make you weigh them with like your carry on bags if you go up to the desk and they'll either charge you more or make you check the bag. But if you go to like the little kiosks that you can go to at most airports, um, if you go to the little kiosks, then you can just like get the carry on labels printed out and do that all so you don't even have to go up to the desk and talk to anyone, which is really nice. And then the second part of this video is how I flew to Europe for $210 Canadian. So that's like 150 US, I think, in a one way. But what I did is I, it was around like Black Friday time and I was looking for some flights. And so I went on the Skyscanner and was just looking and I happened to see this flight to London that was like $230 or something like that, $250. I think something like that, two hundred fifty dollars, and so I was like, oh my gosh, like that's that's pretty cheap, right? And so I immediately, you know, looking at it, wanting to book it right there. But then I went to Student Universe and I found it for two hundred thirty dollars. Plus, it was my first time booking with Student Universe, so I got a twenty dollar off code. So then I, that means I got twenty dollars off more than the two thirty. So that means it was two ten. So it ended up being two hundred ten dollars in the end, which is a really good price um, for one way ticket to. Get to Europe. There are cheaper flights to Iceland, but Iceland's really expensive and then it's hard to kind of travel from Iceland. It's more expensive to travel from Iceland to other countries. Um, London tends to be one of the cheaper flights going into Europe just because it's kind of a big hub and you can go to so many places from London. So yeah, I know this is coming at a weird time because coronavirus is still kind of going on. I mean, restrictions are being lifted, but I mean, you know, like, hopefully things will be back to normal, kind of soon. I mean, not normal, normal, but, you know, you'll be able to travel. Because right now, like, we can't leave Canada. Um, but hopefully things will lessen up and then you can book some flights. Which is what I want to do. There's so many places I want to go right now, it's just overwhelming. <laughs> so, 
So anyways, that's it for the video. Just a couple tips on how to get cheap flights and what I've found that personally works. Um, yeah. So if you like this video, you know, give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any more tips or if you've ever used any of these tips that I, that I gave you. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you guys do some traveling. And the links to the websites I talked about will be down below. As well as a link to my website. Um, I wrote a little blog about this as well a few weeks back. So if you want to check that out, feel free to. And my socials will be down there and all that. All that stuff. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.